Your you evidence, I'll tell you why it's insufficient. Okay, all, you you say is, all you can say is that, oh, let so me so have the right wait, to respond. All you can say is that, oh, um, Islam came 200 years, uh, odd years, later, years later, right? And, okay, uh, Muhammad wanted to come up with some kind of religion. Oh, right, okay. The, the Muslims, we didn't have nothing, right? Christians, the Jews, they've got a book. Oh, come on. I would have, I would have, have a book as well. That's what he came up with. As he was going around from caravan to caravan, trading, whatever, he's hearing stories, right? Let me give you a point. In one thing, even inside the cave, right? Gabriel, that's what they say, talk to Muhammad. What proof did they got that Gabriel spoke? Why would he conflict two messages, right? Why? Why? You know what I'm saying? Issues like that, we don't want to go into, right? So therefore, right, the foundation of Islam is just flawed, nothing. The building cannot even stand up, right? So therefore, the first revelation is a spirit, a spirit itself, right? Has to have a body to come into this existence. A spirit. You're talking about the historical crucifixion, right? And you're doing exactly. all this waffling, right? Exactly. Fine. We're finished now. Now. Prove to me Listen. that Jesus didn't die. So the evidence that you provided that he died was by someone called Matthew. You don't even know who Matthew was. You said he was a disciple. So I asked you a question. Yeah. Were the disciples of Christ literate people, high literate in Greek or Hebrew, or were they ordinary fishermen peasants? Some of them fishermen, yeah. There was, there was tax, he was a tax collector, Matthew. Um, uh, John, was, was he honest? John, Come on, oh, man. Oh, okay. you know, so, you're boring, you know that. Listen, when you bring, when you bring, listen. You're, you're listen, boring, listen, 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 you're boring. Listen, listen. The reason why you, you cannot. tell your colleague's shoes was. The well. reason why you cannot handle this Literally, is because it's too much over your head. It's hey, because you're you stupid I'll tell you. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. It's my turn to say. you ask stupid questions. Let me tell you. The question of intelligence. Listen. You know, you ask an intelligent question. Ask an intelligent question. Ask an intelligent question. Ask an intelligent was was um Matthew honest? Was he? Was this a difficult was question? Honest. Okay, now listen. I'm going to be I'm going to give you a scenario. Imagine now. Listen. I am. I am answering. You're answering. You're this, asking in unintelligent listen, questions. Listen. This gentleman comes along in a court of law and he says, "The Quran. This is the Quran. We don't go by here. Here by saying. Here by saying. It's stupid, right? It's quite logic. It's silly. In a court of law. Silly logic. No, no, listen. In a court of law." Are you, that's are you listening? Are you listening? That's an Islamic. That's Islam. Have that's from, that to Christianity. Have that doesn't that. work. Have some decency. It doesn't work. Have some decency. We don't need it's going to fall down. Have some decency. We don't need decency. Listen, listen. listen. If you can't come to the people of the book, Excuse as your Surah 447 says, do you have the if you want to learn something, do you give me the right to come to Christian Christians, Surah 4, listen to me, Surah 4, 47, it tells you, you as a Muslim, if you want to know something, right, come to us, people of the book, you will learn, read it, take out your, your Quran, take out your Quran, I will take out your Quran, no, 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 no. Take out your Quran. Take and it out. No. About you tell me you are the one making the claim. You make the claim. You establish it. You establish your claim. You establish your claim. The owner is on the one who makes the claim to provide and substantiate with evidence. Islam is a myth. That's what it is. It's a myth. The whole world is not a myth. It's written by man. People, even your own scholars, right? People, scholars, right? What's his name? Substantiate the claims if they make it. Are even rejecting it? Even um. All right. Okay. So are you finished? Let me, let me ask you a question. Are you finished? Let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. Hang on, hang on. Are you finished? Out of all the different Qurans you've got, right? Which Qur'an would you choose to write down? What do you mean I different Qur'an? No, <laughs> Which one? Fire. What do you mean the different Qur'an? The half Qur'an? Half says the Qur'an? Yeah. The Quran. Yeah. Quran. 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 Yeah. The Wash Qur'an? Yeah. Which one would you... Just just those three alone I mentioned. Which one would you take? Oh, all of them. Better say... Oh, all of them. Yeah. And they all say the same thing? Pretty much so, yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Pretty much. Pretty much. You heard it from his... No, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. You heard it from his mouth, didn't Pretty much. One second. One second. Pretty much. Right. Yeah. Okay. Listen, I'm, I'm going off topic. Right. Sorry. No, sorry. you're off topic. Sorry. 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 So let's return to the subject oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Right. Sorry. Sorry. Thank you for sorry. acknowledging sorry. that. Sorry. Right. Sorry. So what I'm saying is, if this gentleman came in a court of law as yeah. a witness, now the judge... And what's the point you're trying to make? I'm about to demonstrate that. 
What's the point you're trying to make? I'm about to demonstrate the point I'm making. If you only listen. Stop the town, Dutch. What's the point you're trying to make? Earlier on, I asked you, is Matthew honest? Yeah. The point I was trying and I to make. To you, how much was known? Are you going to let me speak? Right. So now you're going to demonstrate. To are me. you going to let me speak? Demonstrate. Or are you going to interject? Demonstrate. Be to a me. gentleman. Well, yeah, Thank you. Right. right. Demonstrate to me. I am demonstrating. If someone is going to stand forth as a witness, mm -hmm. they need to be credible witness. Credibility of a witness has certain characteristics. This man has to be trustworthy, reliable, have good character. Have, have, have good memory. If, for example, he says, look, I saw with my... Are you listening? Imagine there was a murder happening. That's a poor example. Come on, man. Just wake I need up. to finish the example. Poor example. Just wake up. Listen. Come on, get to the point. If you allow me to finish, rather example. than making my your own judgment, right? Right. It's a poor example. So if this gentleman Come comes in a court of law and he says, I have seen it with my own eyes. Now, do you know what the judge and the lawyers and jury need to be establishing is? Does he have a good eyesight? Did he actually see it himself? And what colour shoes? Wait, wait, wait. What colour shoes would he wear? Are you listening? <laughs> so when a witness is presented to provide testimony and evidence for something, I know what you're talking about. No, you don't. I wasn't born yesterday. To... So uh, come on, get to the point. Okay. So you understand what I'm saying, right? And, okay. and it doesn't make any sense relating to what we're talking about. Is Matthew honest? Go and provide, provide the testimony the way, that he was honest. Was Did he have good memory? Did he have good memory for what he's recollecting? The question sources would probably say that. Who is right? So now, you brought a witness called Matthew. He said he was a disciple, right? Fine. I'm going to examine Matthew. I'm, I'm, I'm the reason why, the reason Arab? why I am suspecting Matthew of this honesty. Who else did I say as well? Wait, wait. You said some historians which you could not name. John, John, and Okay. Let's start. Let's start with Matthew, brothers, brothers. The reason why I suspect Matthew of dishonesty is not based. Dishonesty. Allow me to finish. I know Islam's come to reject the Bible. Excuse me. I understand that. Allow so me to. All what you're saying. Allow me to express okay. my view. Right. First. You expressed it enough. And now. then. Now listen no, to I me have now. not finished. No, I'm, allow I'm, me to express well, I'm my leave. views. No, I'm going to start. Yeah. Allow, yeah. allow me to finish. Allow me to. Why is he dishonest? What's the reason? Why is he dishonest? Thank you. That's precisely what I was about to go next. But the reason why you interject, too much. why is he? Are you going to allow him to speak? Are you going to allow him to speak without interjecting? But don't bore me. Okay, carry on. If you're bored, that's your problem, not mine. Okay, you're chatting too much. Thank you. Now, Matthew's, Matthew's dishonesty. Let me give you some examples of dishonesty. Are you listening? He's not listening. You're boring me. I'm listening. You're literally boring me. See you later. Bye. Anyone else wants to know Matthew's dishonesty? No, I don't want to know. I, I, get, I take a different uh, tack. Like, I'm not a Christian, as you know. I know. It feels okay, like, no, I'm going to speak to this on. brother. Matthew's like dishonesty. The, the, uh, you know, historically, kind of, there seems to be more evidence for a person called Jesus being crucified than him not being crucified. It's all crucified. rumors. All rumors. Well, I know. Like, and this, the, and if you ask me, I will provide the evidence why this is a rumor. But you could do the same thing about, like, I know. I no, no, say, we're not talking the about. Or all we're not talking about the Sahaba. We are talking about the claim that is made. So Matthew makes a lot of statements, and you can actually decipher that he's making things up. He's lying, distorting, and inventing and fabricating historical information that is already of the past. What for example, James for example, Jesus. let me give you some examples. Matthew says, these are the generations, all of them are 14, from Abraham to David, David to the exile to Babylon, and then up to Jesus Christ, right? 14, 14, 14 generations. He says, these are all the generations. He counts them. 42 generations. But if you go into these people that he is giving you the genealogy of, he's missing out a lot of them in between. What if that's a mistake? Uh, no, not a mistake, deliberately. Now let me tell you why he's dishonest. The people that he misses, for example, he misses out Jehoiakim. Right? Jehoiakim. Matthew wants to present Jesus to be the son of David. To sit on the throne of David. So he gives you a genealogy of individuals which he considers to be giving you the right of heir for the throne of David. 
within this sequence of people within the genealogy, he takes out the Y Kim. You might think it's not significant, like you said, it could be a mistake. But if you were to go and read the Old Testament, God says about Jehovah Kim and his progeny that none of them will have anyone to sit on the throne of David. So God has already, what's it called, like withdrawn this right to claim the throne of David, anyone who comes from Jehovah Kim and his progeny. So if you have Jehovah Kim within this lineage, it is obviously clear that Jesus, from that genealogy, cannot claim to be the son of David and to be on the throne of David. It's shooting yourself on the foot. He omits this name. So when we examine this kind of, this is page number one of Matthew's Gospel. First page, that how dishonest he was with a theological motive of his dishonesty. And why do I say dishonesty? Because he's twisting historical information and saying these are only 14 generations when they're more than 14. This is from page one. If you go into more and more examples, you'll realize how he's making things up. He's twisting and fabricating, and we've done that enough time. I mean, if you ask even Paul, for example, we've done it together, demonstrating Matthew's dishonesty of historical narration twisting and, and, and corrupting it. So, as a person who is presented this claim that Christ was crucified based on testimony of Matthew, I have all the reason to suspect that this man is not giving you the right information because he is theologically biased. He is perhaps, you know, ideologically biased from his own ideology that he holds and various others biases that come to So to get actual information, I would say, you have to take with a pinch of salt. So we don't discount history. We can use what we call methodological neutrality. Stand from that position and assess and see what the evidence presents to you. When we find this evidence, his credibility is in question. What else do we have? We have... Aren't there secular sources? That secular sources secular, are late. Yeah, aren't, aren't there like historians who are secular who still think that there's more evidence that do you know why, Jesus was Do crucified? you know why secular historians like, believe in the death of Christ? Because of their supposed naturalism. His supposition of naturalism, because what happens is this. If you are alive now, you have to die. That's what the reality of experience of, of, of human beings and so on. They can't believe that God intervened and took it up in heaven. No. That is the bias of naturalism. Oh, that is why yeah, they will right. take no, those... On, no, no, hang on. on. I'll never finish. You can speak. Okay, okay. That is why they would have no quarrel. They would have no quarrel in accepting, in accepting these stories. I, I mean, okay, but like you're saying that these other historians have a bias of naturalism. No, no, so that when you modern historians, I'm modern historians, to. okay, these modern historians have a bias of naturalism. Other historians, so that spread rumors. they they assume that people die. But the thing is, though, like they wouldn't necessarily assume that someone died by crucifixion. The fact that they're sort of believing that someone was crucified. That kind of gives them reason to believe that this person would have died from crucifixion because, like, what, what do you have more evidence for? We have lots of evidence of people being crucified and dying from crucifixion. We don't really have any other recorded pieces of evidence for us to believe that when people are crucified, they get, like, teleported to heaven and then have someone replaced but, but on, but the, James, on the cross. Say, the Quran does actually say, whether or not you believe it's revelation, that it was made to appear that he was crucified. So, in fact, the Quran affirms that kind of understanding. It's not denying in that sense the appearance of crucifixion and it was made to appear that he was uh, it's denying uh, in the majority view although there is actually within the Islamic tradition different views on what the Quran actually says it appears to be saying that he appeared to have died but that he wasn't uh, if one rejects any kind of datum from the divine not just from the horizontal but from the vertical as well as naturalistic historians do then you're going to be left with that but if you do actually believe there is datum from revelation then in a holistic 
understanding of life, the universe, and everything, you're going to take that into account. But Western historiography is consistently naturalist in its uh, presuppositions. So it will exclude any data that doesn't come from a this worldly source. Now, you can do that, the fair Jews, if you want to do it, it's fine. But you don't have to have that view. And religious people choose not to be. Okay, so Muslims and Christians believe that Jesus was born of a virgin. Ah, but you say, we've never ever heard of God uh, bringing about a virgin birth before, therefore it didn't happen. Well, that's a philosophical assumption, it's actually a prejudice against the facts. Because the facts may be, actually, that divine did create a virgin birth, just so happens, on this one amazing, unique occasion. So, in, would, so, would, would it be fair to say what you're calling a bias? Is actually also could, you could also call it empiricism. Yeah, it's empiricism. Okay, empiricism yeah, so that, that means like believing in yeah. things based on evidence. Yeah, and that's kind of a rational way to go about things. That's how we spend most of our what, lives. But it's a methodological bias. It's a methodological bias. Methodological and, bias. And, and it's not ultimately not, you can't prove that only science, for example, is the only criterion of truth. Because science can't tell you that. That is a uh, an assumption that you bring to the scientific method. Uh, oh, this is the only truth we accept. Muslims and Christians and Jews say, well, there's truth in empiricism, but also there's other layers of dimensional truth which also feed into understanding of reality. So there's an assumption here which is a philosophical one which people are entitled not to accept. Okay, like, I mean, any, so, like, I'm, I'm not going to assume that the world is entirely natural. I'm not going to say, like, kind of, you know, this is what, how I'm going to start looking at the world. But for any given uh, account of the supernatural, any given piece of scripture, like, I think it's reasonable to ask what are the reasons to believe that this scripture really is from God rather than a product of man. And so, if a piece of scripture is making some claims about things that happened, uh, you know, hundreds of years before that piece of scripture was, um, uh, you know, formed or brought into the world, and also the claims of that piece of scripture sort of contradict, uh, you know, earlier sources, then we, we, need, we would need to first establish that this piece of scripture, that there is some reason to believe that this piece I, of scripture I, okay, is from God. Everything you said and that, I, I completely agree okay. with you. The problem so, is that the Gospel of Matthew, if we're talking about that Gospel of Matthew, does not claim to be scripture, revelation, inspired by God. God, yeah. give advice. Didn't claim any of that. Yeah, I'm not, In I'm fact, not, neither yeah. does anything, uh, with the possible exception of the last book of the Bible, claim to be inspired by God. So we're not dealing with something that the author of Matthew thought was scripture, or indeed anyone of his contemporaries thought was scripture. Only much later generations decided, ah, oh, now we're, we're, we're now going to give it that canonical status as the inspired word of God. They didn't claim that. Now, Muslims yeah. may claim uh, uh, that their scripture it, do, it, it does claim to be scripture and inspired. So you're, you're dealing with apples and oranges, like and unlike. Here. You can't equate a man-made script, a man-made text that doesn't claim to be scripture with revelation that does claim to be. You're dealing with different, different uh, categories. Well, well, yeah, yeah. I, I wasn't trying to claim that uh, the book of Matthew was doesn't scripture. claim to be scripture. Yeah, yeah. I, I wasn't trying to make that claim. But I mean, so uh, let's try and get back to the original point. Like, I, I, I sort of feel that, um, you know, historically there are kind of secular historians, by, by which I mean kind of people who aren't sort of, uh, you know, um, Christian in their worldview. But uh, there are still historians who think that uh, historically there's more reason to believe that someone called Jesus was crucified. And because I think one of the sources because that that's they what use, they have. The rumors, but, but I think the one, of the, sources, one of the sources they use to infer that is like I think Josephus. Like I've heard this name being Josephus, called. Josephus wasn't a witness of the current crucifixion anyway. I mean, he was a Roman. He became a Roman historian, he lived in Rome, he wasn't a, a, but a witness. If, if, he's, if he's recording this account, then doesn't, he that, heard mean, doesn't that mean that the account was in, in circulation at the time? According like to the that. Quran, if you were there, according to the Quran, just to get, run with this argument for a second, say you were there uh, in 1830, and according to the Quran, what would you have seen? According to the Quranic narrative about the crucifixion of Jesus, what would you have seen according to the Quran? It was made to appear. Like that's so would said. you have seen the crucifixion or not according to the Quran? Yeah, crucifixion. Right. What do historians, centuries, thousands of years later, what do they report? The, the crucifixion. crucifixion. Exactly. Of, so the, the Quran and they, and they the believe that narrative Jesus actually Jesus. endorses that perspective in some kind of weird way. If you okay. I mean. but, it means, but it means, though, that the only reason to believe that Quran narrative is if you have reason to believe that the Quran is from God. That's and my so, position. It may not be a position okay. of other people, but that's my position. So is, is, there any reason, is there any reason to believe that Jesus was not crucified other than if you believe that the Quran is from God? Remember the gentleman I spoke to earlier, I said this part A and part B to the question. Right. Part A 
was the Quran is the divine revelation and, it and it's the source that. of ultimate truth, right? right? But of course, he doesn't agree with that divine revelation. But right. he, in principle, he agrees divine revelation should be the source of ultimate truth. Yeah. But then I moved on saying the evidence that is presented that someone was crucified is at best a well attested rumor. That is what the Quran is saying. It's here, People it's here. perceive, they have this perception that crucifixion took place and Jesus was crucified. And the Quran then immediately afterwards says he wasn't killed or crucified, but God took him up. So the perception was there, which led the rumor of the people and the historians to narrate this information. But a miraculous thing happened that God saved them. That is why it is unique that God, knowing that this perception was around. There were some Christians, by the way, who didn't think Jesus was crucified. There were some Christians in the first century who didn't think. You might not know this. I think I've heard of that book. The facilities, as they are known by patristic scholars, um, were a group of Christians who didn't believe Jesus of Nazareth was crucified. So it's actually even wrong to say all Christians believe Jesus was crucified. I'm not saying that's evidence for the non crucifixion uh, Jesus, just saying that some persons Christians didn't believe Jesus was crucified. Uh, they believed someone else was. Uh, I mean, are, on Simon if, and Cyrene. If, 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 if on balance, there's more. Is there more evidence supporting that a crucifixion took place that, was, that the people yes. around thought was of Jesus? If I was a secular historian, obviously within that limitation of the appearance of the crucifixion, I would go with that. Okay. I mean, it all depends where, how you're coming at this issue uh, and uh, what, what you limit your frames of reference to. Okay. And if you go to purely secular to the appearance, then you're going to conclude, of course, as a naturalist, that Jesus must have been crucified. If you have other data from other sources, which are even more reliable, which is the Muslim argument, then of course you're going to accept that. You're going to upgrade your credit credibility to something more solid. All right. Um, yeah. Okay. So, it's a matter of faith. It's a matter of faith. A matter of faith. Do you believe the Quran? That's how I said. Do you believe the Quran's the word of God or not? Now you're an atheist, by the way. So this, we agnostic. should be discussing. Oh, you're an agnostic. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah I'm talking about. Oh, you, you've moved a along to a bit more. That's good. Okay. Well, whatever. Sure. <laughs> Last but time we two weeks. Yeah, that is a development. That is an internal I, development, right? I mean, I, I've always been of the opinion that, you know, I'm not sure whether or not God exists. So maybe some people say atheism is a lack of belief in God. So if you don't take a position, that would kind of be an atheist, according to some people, even though the original meaning of atheist was disbelieving in God. Yeah. But I mean, you know, uh, it, it, it can get a bit confused, the terminology yeah. but if, these but days. But if you're in a position where you don't know possibility exists, that God exists, there's a possibility, yeah. then that's not atheism, that's agnosticism. Sure. That yeah. is a, 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 you know, a strong move forward compared to a total rejection of God, which is like yeah. a positive claim that God doesn't exist in right, right. yeah. atheism. Yeah. So yeah. this is, this is uh, you know, uh, a, a step that we can discuss further on this issue to demonstrate. Uh, Sorry, but, uh, was calling, yeah. huh? the cameraman for this. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll be there shortly. Um, nice speaking to you and to you. Um, okay, yeah, nice speaking to you as well. Um, unfortunately, the gentleman couldn't um, carry on with the conversation.